Next up, we're going to work on the plates that fit on top of the fixture. These guys right here. And these guys will screw down to the fixture below. And then you just open up holes as necessary to uh, hold whatever part it is you want to hold down. I have two of these pieces because I figure at some point in the future, I'm going to want something custom that I can't hold down any other way. So I'm going to make my generic fixture and uh, leave this one for future. And hopefully uh, you'll like my idea. I think I can with a pretty good one. First up, we're going to use the same rotating technique I used before. So at least I think I am. So I need to take these, take a pin and I need to reduce it to a smaller diameter because I want to tap those holes quarter 20. So quarter inch holes won't do. We're going to, that is a number seven. So we're going to ream it number seven. Uh, so I've got to take a pin and I've got to grind the end down to the number seven or yeah, number seven size. So I don't know if you're going to be able to see this because everything's very tight, but the pin is just barely sticking out of a 5C collet and we're just going to drop the uh, wheel down onto it and take it down to 0.201. Here's the pin finished. 0.201, almost right on the money. Beautiful finish. We're going to drill and countersink for the top plate. We're going to drill and countersink the top plate. First we're going to drill all the holes, then we'll come back and countersink them. Beauty is I only need to know really one number. Everything's 3.786 off of the center and center zero. So I guess that's sort of two numbers technically, but uh, should be pretty straightforward. Countersink to point two. All right, so here's one quadrant of this thing. And I basically have a bunch of little hold down holes. Each one can be sealed up individually. This is going to be drill and ream for number seven, which is a quarter 20 tap drill. And uh, the reason I'm doing that is because uh, that will allow me to initially have a rotation point. The reamed hole will be a good center for this, and I can rotate around to do, to do my O-ring holes. And then when I'm done, I tap it and all is good. And uh, these, these O-rings are one and a quarter outer, one inch inside diameter, and hopefully it'll all work out. Drilled number nine. And that would be ream number seven. Now they're reamed, all of them. That only took like five minutes. That was speedy. 1.422, 2.8440, 2 and plus or minus, that's it. And 1.422 is half of 2.844, easy to remember. Now we're just gonna use a one inch end mill to take this down, I don't know, maybe 20 thousandths, 30 thousandths. Oops. I want to put this in bag here. I can go a little deeper than that. I'm using my quill stop for this. Okay. Last up, we're going to do the O-ring grooves to hold the O-rings in each one of these. And I think they're only going to be held on the outside because I kind of screwed up because the inside diameter of the O-ring is the same as size as this hole. So the inside of the O-ring won't be supported. May have been a mistake. We'll have to find that out. Um, I've got this pin to locate each one of these centers here that I drilled and reamed. And uh, that'll let me rotate around that point. However, I've got to find the center of this guy again. So to rough it in, I drop my, uh, my center center drill here, my spotting drill, and roughly did it north, south, and east, west, or x and y. And uh, then I want to dial it in closer. And in order to do that, I'm going to use a, a Blake center finder. So I made this puck here that fits really tightly in here. It's got a couple tenths play as all. Well. I made it like two tenths under is it. And uh, we're going to use this because center finding on this guy would be really difficult. So Instead, we're going to center find on this puck. All right, so we're within half a thousandth right there. And my rough estimate was 20 thousandths and 7 thousandths X and Y for smiley, so not terribly close, but it got me in the ballpark. All right, so call me crazy. Uh, we have a center pin here and a clamp. So the center pin keeps it from going anywhere, uh, X or Y, and the Z is controlled by the clamp. 
which also helps in X and Y. Uh, it's pretty tight. Um, so we're just going to go in our uh, 125 thousandths. Now the weird thing, this is aluminum, so I'm not sure how this is going to act. So we're going to go for high RPM again. Since this thing really does seem to like high RPM. But my question with aluminum is what's it going to do? Can we do the whole thing in one bite? That's a question. Let's try a hundred thousandths. I guess we'll go max uh, RPM on this, 4200. So next time I'll choose a smaller center area. That was a mistake, or I shouldn't have gone as deep. That's another thing I could have done that would have been an improvement. could probably drive this rotary table with a drill motor as quickly as it's going. Here's the O-ring fit. It's a good fit and it looks like it'll stay in place. I think it's right. If I went out a little further, it'd stretch the O-ring. The only thing is, this leaves the O-ring a little bit proud and I, I hope it can squish enough. You'll... Uh, I don't know if the vacuum will pull this down enough. We don't want the parts sitting on the O-ring. We want the parts sitting on the machine surface with the O-ring just making a good seal. So I'm thinking I might need to go a little bit deeper because this doesn't seem like it's going to let it sit flat. And that was the last one. Holy cow, that was a lot of work. I ended up using a drill motor to power the uh, rotary table because it was getting really tiring uh, rotating this guy over and over and over. All right, we're on the last step here. And uh, now that I've used all these uh, drilled and reamed holes for uh, rotation points, uh, next up, we got to drill and tap them so I can put set screws in to close off these holes to close off the vacuum for the ones that I'm not interested in using at that time. That way I can like use just this hole or this pair of holes or these four holes. Uh, you get my point. Now, the one thing I'm not sure about, I've tried all different variations on the bases of the O-ring seats, and the O-rings I got are a little bit odd-sized. They're supposed to be eighth-inch thick material, but they're actually 0.131. Uh, they don't quite fit in this O-ring seat, so I, I went, rather than going down 110 thousandths like the manufacturer of the bit suggested, uh, Pearson Wark Holding, uh, I went down 125 thousandths and they still, they're also very stiff material, so they also feel not only are they proud, but they might not squeeze flat, so we're going to have to figure out whether that's correct. But I'm going to use my tapping machine here. We're going to take the old tapping head and uh, we're going to tap all these holes because uh, manually, boy, that would really uh, be a bummer. I'm not a big fan. Is it 17.7? There it is. Yeah, about 17.7 is good. Gotta tell you, it's making quick work of it though. If I could remember, it's the top button that is uh, in and the bottom one is out. I kind of think of them in the other direction. To be honest, I'm tempted to rewire the handle on this guy. So I know that if I start the first thread right off the bat, then when I get to the bottom, I'll be at about 17.7. Now, 
if I don't press down so it doesn't engage, this thing just pretty much counts revolution. So I'll be off, but as long as I'm paying attention, it seems like this is growing swimmingly. Last hole, it's been like five minutes. I probably would have been on the second or third hole if I had to manually do this. And that was it, we're done. 25 holes. All right, so here we are at the end and I've used set screws in the bottom of some of these to plug these up. The center nine are empty at the moment. Uh, maybe that'll be more obvious, I don't know. But the set screws are just used to keep you know, the vacuum from leaking when you're not using it. These bottom side, I experimented with three of the holes and the experiments failed on two out of the three. Uh, the the O-rings don't seat very well and they pop out. So I probably should have uh, recut those before I drilled, uh, before I tapped these. I didn't realize it. I had to deburr it and uh, didn't discover it until too late. Uh, the rest of these, the O-rings sit okay. These are very stiff rubber, a lot harder rubber than this stuff over here. So I'm not sure how well they're going to compress. Now the steel plate can be held to the surface plate uh, magnet. I'm sorry, the steel plate can be held on the magnet on the surface grinder and used as a magnetic, ch as a vacuum chuck all by itself for parts that are at least as big as the outside perimeter here where the gasket is. Uh, for smaller parts, that's where this one came in. This was sort of an experimental approach and I wasn't sure how well it was gonna work. I'm still not sure because I, these O-rings again are very, very firm. They need to be a softer material, I think. So the bottom O-ring seems to have compressed pretty nicely. Uh, I've beveled both sides of this so you can't really see the fact, but I can't even get my fingernail in there. So it did press flat. And since I based everything on center line, I didn't bother dimensioning everything very closely as I mentioned earlier. So let's see if it'll hold down a part. And I'm curious if these will squeeze down enough to actually hold the part against the metal rather than floating on the rubber material, which is no good. All right, so let's test this guy out. We've got the center nine holes open, the rest are closed. I'm gonna set this guy on here. Doesn't quite cover enough holes to do all of them. I don't know if this is gonna pull flat. That's a pretty far way down, but let's see what happens here. Let's turn our vacuum pump on. I put a set screw in every one, and unfortunately, they are leaking, because if I put my hand on any one of these, it sucks in pretty nicely. So there's a lot of air getting around the sides of these set screws. So that was a fail. Um, I thought that would work better. I guess I should have not uh, tapped all the way through so that they could tighten to the bottom. Then maybe the threads would be tight enough to seal better, but this is not a good seal. Yeah, that holds a little bit there, just from leakage, no less. That's just not very good. So we're gonna take this plate off. We're gonna try just the base piece, which I think is making a good connection. I got this big piece of uh, 1095 spring steel here, and we'll just see if it sucks down pretty well. All right, let's test this guy. Yep, it can lift the heavy base, no problem. So I haven't let it pump down all the way. The more you let it pump down, the stronger, the more, the deeper the vacuum, probably the best way to describe it. And the more pressure from the weight of the atmosphere above it will be pushing down on it. So right now I can, so it's got a pretty good uh, hold on it, but it does come off. So even with the base plate, I get some leakage, possibly where the O-rings meet, where they're glued together. I'm gonna try this. I don't know if this is gonna work. This doesn't even necessarily make a lot of sense but I just took some Teflon tape and just set it on top of the O-ring. And then I'm gonna take the other piece of tooling plate that matches the other one here and just set it on here. And it just leaks, it just leaks. I gotta say, this one's on there. Well, I can't peel it off, but the moment I turn it off, the vacuum leaks away. Oh, yeah, 
vacuum leaks away very quickly. So I'm not sure where the leaks are. Uh, oh, you know, I know where one of the leaks going to be. Because <laughs> I used a set screw again. And we know that set screws don't work very well. So I got to find another solution for this. Or put some Teflon tape around the set screw for that one. Because I thought that was going to be a better seal. But we know now that that's not. So the set screw is my leak. I put some Teflon around it. And now this thing pumped down very quickly. And pretty hard to get off. And it drops down pretty quickly. Yeah, it seems to be working. That's pretty good. Okay, so the, uh, the gap between the O-ring is not the problem. So I can pick this whole plate up by this. That, that's a pretty good uh, hold there. All right, so putting some Teflon around this guy and tightening it down, sealed that set screw off. I know that the set screw solution is not a very good one unless you have something to seat against. This one seats against aluminum, so it does seat in there. Um, that was a mistake, shouldn't have done that. Now I'm living and learning. But this seal is very good. It just slightly protrudes and is working well. We're gonna work on this one next, see if we can get it better. All right, here's attempt number two. So I've countersunk all of these holes. I don't know if you can see that from the angle, there you go. And I bought some nylon quarter 20 screws that are very short. And I'm hoping the nylon will seat against this uh, chamfer in here, or countersink. I also got new O-rings. This is much softer material, and they're smaller. They're actually 125 nominally instead of 131, and they just stick up ever so slightly. So I'm hoping they'll make a better seal. So we're going to try this one and see if this one works. <laughs> you know... If this all fails, you always have super glue, but super glue's got the problem where you need to heat the part after to break the glue down or put solvent on it to get the glue to come loose. So super glue has its own issues. I think it'll hold ultimately better than this. Remember, uh, atmospheric pressure at sea level is about 14.7 pounds per square inch. Each one of these center areas is a little bit under a square inch. So, you know, 14.7, call it 15, 15, 15. So you could get with nine of these, you could get a fair amount of force, like 90 pounds of, of hold down force. But um, if you're only using one, that's not very much at all. So for small parts, super glue might still be the solution. Let's see how it works out. So my camera pooped up on the last go around, but uh, I did a pass at 20,000 depth of cut, which is a third of the material thickness, and it worked out great. And I'm going to try that again. Now remember, I'm only holding, I guess I am holding right here. So we're going to take a slow cross feed and see if we can cut this without pushing it around. This is only brass, but it's the only material I had that was thin like this. But it looks like it's working pretty well. We're going to try one more pass here. Now that I've squared it up a little because it wasn't a very straight cut the last time. And I don't think there's quite as much friction as I might like. I'm just trying to clean up the edge on this one. doing a pretty good job. I'm uh, engaging about 75% of the cutter on this little quarter inch end mill right now with a reasonably fast feed rate and it's not slipping at all which is good. Looking at my uh, vacuum pump it does appear that there is some leakage even around these nylon screws. I tightened them, but I didn't try and over tighten them because I was worried about the threads because they are only nylon. I also have some steel, some steel ones, so maybe I'll try those, see if they seal better. But this is clearly not an ideal solution. All right, so I just want to test my vacuum again. I know some of these aren't really that tight, so I'm going to snug them down a little better, see if we can actually get the nylon to form to the shape of the uh, countersink. So this improved it significantly. It's pumping down further, but it's not going better than 9,800, nowhere near the 50-some hundred that I got with just the base piece. 
So there is some leaks around here somewhere and I could just put some dishwashing soap and water to find it, but I don't have a separator. So one thing you really need in your vacuum line is a separator and a separator could just be a jar with a pipe that goes to the bottom of the jar on the inlet side from wherever you're sucking from and then to the pump, just a little, little inlet at the top. That way debris will get stuck at the bottom and even better yet is to like fill it full of some cotton or something that'll uh, filter out any debris because you don't want to suck chips into your pump. But it does seem to be working pretty well. Uh, you can definitely take some decent cuts on soft material here. I don't have any steel to try it on or I would. Uh, I mean, I've got some big thick pieces, but uh, that's, not, that's not the uh, perfect solution. Yeah, the, it holds the vacuum for a little while. Still not by any means perfect. I was kind of curious about this. So how consistent was the cut? So let's see, 42 thousandths, 41 thousandths, 39 thousandths. So there's a little bit of taper there. Uh, two thousandths taper over about seven inches. So that wasn't perfect. I haven't deburred this or anything, um, but it does work. So for now, I only will use it on something that's non-critical. Uh, a nice thing to be adding to this probably would be fences on a couple sides so your part could lean up against it and that way you could mill into that while it holds it down. That would be nice. Or maybe screw on fences that are pinned in or something. Uh, that would, or even some pins. Yeah, if you just line up some pins really nicely, that'll be able to line up a part perfectly. That might be great. Uh, the hold down force seems to be adequate. Um, but because there's like a little rubbery wiggle that you can feel, I'm still not flush against the aluminum or I'm flush against the aluminum, but there's not enough friction on the surface. So there's definitely room for improvement here. It's been a really interesting project and I've learned a lot on it. Uh, clearly have a long way to go to get this right. It's probably why companies like Pearson Work Holding uh, do what they do because they've spent a lot of time trying to perfect this design and I'm sure theirs is a lot better than mine. But I learned a ton and we've got uh, a future ahead of us. Thanks for watching. Hope you find it useful. Hope to see you next time.